pledge to start by believing. Mi nombre es Lisa Raigosa. Cuando alguien me dice que fueron violadas o agredidas sexualmente, yo prometo a empezar por creer. My name is Lisa Ryan. When someone tells me they were raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. More than 160 women say Larry Nassar sexually abused them. It's one of the worst sexual abuse scandals in the history of sports. And it went on for more than two decades. The ripple effect of our actions or inactions can be enormous, spanning generations. Perhaps the greatest tragedy of this nightmare is that it could have been avoided. Predators thrive in silence. It is all too common for people to choose to not get involved. Whether you act or do nothing, you are shaping the world that we live in, impacting others. All we needed was one adult to have the integrity to stand between us and Larry Nasser. If just one adult had listened, believed, and acted, the people standing before you on this stage would have never met him. I am Chief John Venuti, and I start by believing. I'm Officer Brandy Boyd, and I start by believing. I'm Officer Andrew Hudgens, and I start by believing. I'm Sergeant Chelsea McCarty, and I start by believing. We are the Victim Witness Specialist for the City of Richmond, and we start by believing. I'm Dispatcher Derek McDonald, and I start by believing. Here at Virginia Commonwealth University, Start By Believing is more than a campaign. It's a mindset that is part of a culture of this department 
that helps us assist and provide support to survivors of sexual violence. Welcome, I'm Bea Thayer, Executive Director of the Yavapai Justice and Mental Health Coalition. I'm also on the Board of Directors of End Violence Against Women International. Ten years ago, at a conference designed to support sexual assault response teams, I ran across a poster that had two dialogue bubbles. First one stating, my daughter died in a car accident. The responding dialogue bubble said, well, oh, that's what she gets for taking the bus. How appalling. How apathetic. And then it clicked. The response that they had on those posters is the response given to too many people who have experienced the trauma of sexual assault. This poster with the two quote bubbles was in fact the kickoff of the Start by Believing campaign by End Violence Against Women International. The goal was to demonstrate what was the truth. After a person who has been assaulted discloses and reports the assault is sadly too often one of shaming and blaming. From that conference 10 years ago, Chief Monahan and I were partnering in coordinating and facilitating multidisciplinary trainings around Northern Arizona on the responses to sexual assault. We utilized the Start by Believing materials. We took it to heart. Chief Monahan advocated that this response, starting in a space of belief, was a simple means forward for victims, survivors, and the justice system. We know that every response matters and that your response matters. We are pleased to have with us today professionals, advocates, law enforcement, and proponents of the Start by Believing campaign explaining how this campaign and initiative has truly supported investigations and healing on these atrocious crimes against victims. Thank you. I am so excited to be joining Yavapai College in Yavapai County for Start by Believing Day. This has been a long process. Of course, we all thought we would be there in person last year. And here we are over a year later, still working virtually. And I'm excited to see so many communities like Yavapai making this happen virtually. Um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the origins of the campaign, where it started, why it started, where we are, where we're going. And as a sergeant uh, retired from the San Diego Police Department, I think it's really important to recognize that my vision for the Start by Believing campaign actually occurred to me when I was working as a detective in the early to mid 80s, I was working uh, child abuse. And I was shocked at the number of mothers that didn't believe their children when they disclosed that they'd been sexually assaulted. And uh, it wasn't just mothers. As a woman, it bothered me that these mothers you know, didn't believe their children. But of course, it was family members. It was teachers. It was school nurses. Um, people just had difficulty believing that these people who looked perfectly normal could do these things and question children. And of course, oftentimes, uh, these children began acting out, failing in school, turning to drugs or alcohol or runaway behaviors. And it broke my heart that offenders were then able to use those negative behaviors to destroy a victim's credibility. So that was pretty surprising. Uh, in 1993, I went to sex crimes as a sergeant. My unit handled about a thousand felony sexual assaults a year. And I was shocked even more. Uh, if I thought it was hard for children, I learned quickly that it was even harder for adolescents and adult victims of sexual assault. Uh, people didn't blame children as much, they just didn't believe them. So in addition to adolescents and adults not being believed, they were often 
uh, most often blamed for their sexual assault. So um, we at In Violence Against Women International took this concept. It was the number one thing that I felt we needed to change in our society, reducing the stigma. And my goal was also to educate the community, which to me as a career law enforcement officer meant educate, educating future jurors. Um, that's always been my concern because even when we do the investigations right, the prosecutors do everything they can. Um, we often lose these cases at trial in front of jurors. Um, so few of these cases, less than 3% of victims who come forward ever see their offender convicted. And I wanted to make a difference uh, with that. So at this point, uh, we have about 577 campaigns nationally. Um, we know there are a lot more campaigns out there, but those are people who have reported to us and probably more organized campaigns like what you have there in Yavapai. We have eight star five leading states, so we have a lot of work left to do. I'd like to see all 50 states uh, make a commitment to start by believing. We are in 24 countries, including the United States. So that's pretty important. The other thing that I recognize is when I was in child abuse, it always felt like people that I worked with, our allies were blaming law enforcement. I'm not sure if they meant that, but that's how I felt as a detective, that we just couldn't get it right, that we were too macho, too cynical, too jaded. And that always felt really bad to me because I knew how hard I worked on my cases and how much those cases meant to me, how much the victims meant to me, um, it hurt. And it wasn't until many years later that I was in sex crimes that I thought, wow, that is so false. Because what I learned is that victims aren't busting down the doors of the rape crisis centers or healthcare professionals either. And it wasn't uh, long ago, 2018, NIJ funded some research by DePrince. And this really hit home for me because I knew this to be a fact, but had never seen the research. At least I knew it from my own experience. But sexual assault victims typically receive more negative reactions from friends and family members than they do from law enforcement or community-based service providers. They also receive less helpful information and tangible aid from these support people than professionals. I think that's pretty shocking. I think that sometimes law enforcement gets a lot of the brunt of the blame because we have the power to make a case go forward or not go forward. Advocates don't make those decisions. Healthcare professionals don't make decisions about whether cases are going to go forward. And so I get that, but this was something that I knew, but until that research was published in 18, I'd not seen um, an evidence-based uh, statement like this. And so I wanna go back to what Start By Believing is intended to do. It's to level the playing field. It's so that when a victim comes forward, um, they're met with support, kindness, instead of judgment, instead of questioning. You know, look at child abuse cases. A kid discloses to another student. The student tells the teacher. The teacher interviews the kid. The teacher goes to the school nurse. The school nurse interviews the kid. The school nurse goes to the VP and the VP interviews the kid, and then they go to the principal, and it goes on and on, and each one of these people are deciding whether this is a valid case that they should involve professionals and get that person help, and that's what we're trying to change. That's not their role. Some of the criticisms about, you know, law enforcement can't start by believing um, it's biased. I, I've never bought that. It's like in child abuse, I remember as a detective being told that we couldn't tell a victim that we were sorry this happened to them, I always disagreed with that. The truth is good police investigations are like good science. They can be replicated by any other investigator or a you know, scientist can replicate the science of another person. So I always said, I can tell a victim, I'm sorry, something happened to them and let my investigations stand where the evidence took us. Um, this is all about changing uh, responses so that victims feel that they are supported. Um, because so few do, of course, feel that, the negative harms, the impact on their life, their health, and the safety of our communities. Um, we need to remember, again, this isn't just law enforcement. Sure, we know that 
you know, only 5 to 20% report to law enforcement, but less than half of them are seeking medical care. And uh, it's just as low when it comes to mental health services. So our goal is to improve all of our community responses and just be a kinder society. You know, telling somebody that we're sorry this happened to them, what can you do to help? And law enforcement, let's just do our job. Whether a law enforcement officer ever tells a victim directly, I believe you, I don't really need that. I mean, all I want is for us to treat this person with compassion, with dignity. And in law enforcement, I want us to do our job. If we are listening and taking down a statement and doing our job, it will signal that that person is being treated with respect and professionalism that they deserve. Uh, last year, we had 942 new pledges to start by believing and we had 79 new campaigns. This is the 10th anniversary of um, Start By Believing. We launched in Chicago in April, 2011. And I have a personal goal. I don't know if we'll make it, but I'd like to see the pledges at least double from the 942. And if we could do 79 new campaigns in the midst of a pandemic that had just started and we weren't geared up to doing virtual events like this one that you're doing in Yavapai, I think that we could see that 79 double. So I'm going to hope that we're going to double in both areas. Um, I've been given a limited amount of time here. I know you have a full event, lots of great people to hear from, all very exciting. So uh, thank you to Chief Monahan, Bea Thayer, Yavapai for inviting me to speak to you all today. Good luck with the rest of your day. Mi nombre es Raimundo Romero Rodríguez. Cuando alguien me dice que fueron bordeadas o agredidas sexualmente, yo prometo my name is Megan. When someone tells me they've been raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. Hi, I'm Versha, founder of Roar Training and Consulting, advocate for victims of violence and international speaker. Thank you for taking the time to join me today to partake in this important conversation. I would like to start off by visiting a brief scenario. Let's imagine that you and I are visiting the country of Ranatania and we decide to take a train trip. We are not familiar with the language, nor are we familiar with the customs. Ranatania has a reputation for police being rude, obnoxious, questioning and blaming victims. We sit in a train compartment, reading books, listening to music, partaking in pleasant conversation. Okay, so maybe the costumes or the outfits that we're wearing here are not exactly uh, what we would wear on a train ride, but you get the point. The train meanders along the countryside and through cities making stops along the way. All of a sudden, the doors to our train compartment fling wide open and an intruder enters yelling, give me your valuables now. Mortified, we decide to comply. We take off our watch, necklace, bangles, and hand them to the intruder. The intruder gets off at the next train station. We pause, we hesitate, and we start laughing hysterically. This time, fortunately, the items taken were indeed fake. But let's pause for a moment and think about this. What if these items were not fake, but what if they were valuable? Nonetheless, we would agree that a crime has occurred we would feel a sense of violation that has occurred. And would we feel comfortable reporting this to police, especially given the reputation of law enforcement blaming victims? Would we feel like we would be heard? How does culture impact our collective actions, customs, norms towards reporting crimes? And what would justice look like? We all are unique in our own way. Yet the scenario highlights the commonalities that unite us around the world, the desire to be heard, understood, valued, and having a sense of justice. We indeed are different externally in many ways, appearance, skin tone, height, weight, hair color. Yet internally, we are very similar. The human body consists of 206 bones, 3.8 million cells are produced every second, according to biologists Milo and Sander. We have one brain and one heart that beats about 100,000 times a day. We feel, we laugh, we cry, we hurt. We 
are human. There's a basic common humanity that is present and this desire to be understood and accepted by others can be witnessed worldwide. In my work, as I travel around the world and meet people, I train and speak on these very important topics, including bias, communication, healing, trauma-informed care, bullying, to bring awareness and increased understanding amongst diverse people and professionals. Part of this dialogue consists of considering the impact that law enforcement, professionals, and community members can have on victims and survivors of crimes, including sexual assault victims. In many parts of the world, police are feared and victims feel they will be blamed for the assault. Furthermore, one out of three women worldwide experiences violence. Countries may increasingly have laws against domestic violence or sexual assault. However, it may, be, it may not be viewed as a crime and victims are further blamed by the community and family. At the heart of it, we see the world through our own respective unique lenses. Let me pause and ask you, if a loved one, human, or a four-legged furry friend is hurt, how would you respond? We would most likely spring into action to help. What we hold near and dear, we advocate for. We protect and support with all our might. Now, let's take a look at the figure, kind of a silhouette, if you will, a colorful silhouette in the pink rectangular box before you with a number of faces behind. How likely would you or I be to responding to a person that we do not know? Research actually indicates we are not very likely to respond to people who we do not know. Recently, a study by Cornell University noted in medical emergencies, only one out of 39 people were likely to get help by a stranger. Only one out of 39. Bias by center intervention, collaboration between law enforcement and survivors each has a negative or positive impact on the survivor. Support by each of these entities on the left-hand side of the screen is critical for the survivor to address the hurt, get help, and begin to heal. Also, the web of people that you see behind the survivor here has the ability to make a difference. We may not know of the collective positive impact we can have on each other as colleagues, friends, family members to victims and survivors. With that, I would like to ask you, on any given night, when we look to the sky, when you look to the sky, what do you see? We may see depths of darkness and maybe a glimmer or shimmer of light here and there. Indeed, there's a dark canvas before us. Yet billions of stars are forever present through the entire galaxy, glimmers of light shining upon us. These stars, I feel, represent all the possibilities and actualities of support by different people out there. I say, unknown to one another and unaware of their collective powers, together shining upon us brightly in our darkest hours. Each of us has that ability to positively impact and uplift others. This is what lies at the heart of advocacy, our voices collectively advocating for yours, mine, and ours. With that in mind, the support for survivors is critical and makes the difference between a victim or survivor reporting a crime, seeking help, and staying silent. Start by Believing, powerful campaign indeed, now in its 10th year, continues to help survivors worldwide, urging people to support survivors. If a person states, my daughter died in a car crash, and someone responded, well, that's what she gets for not taking the bus, we would say that that would be rude, offensive, and inappropriate. This is what the Start By Believing campaign calls to attention to. The power of Start By Believing is to start from that premise of listening, offering resources, and not judging. Then an investigation must follow, and we follow the chain of evidence. This is the powerful messaging that has been seen in many places around the world.
There are examples of campaigns popping up and pledges being made worldwide. Universities, towns, communities have taken Start By Believing pledges. From Australia to Zimbabwe to Vietnam, there are stories of individuals creating unique campaigns. In Italy, for example, I've witnessed Start By Believing placards being placed on taxi cabs and driven through the city, creating awareness. Materials now have been translated into multiple languages. As we mark this landmark year of Start By Believing, we recognize the communities near and far who are dedicated to supporting survivors. Meeting people making pledges from Italy to Ghana to Spain as pictured here, it has been wonderful to be a part and witness this collective movement. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. So said Socrates. I leave you with this powerful quote, every response matters, your response matters. So here's to start by believing pledges, proclamations, and campaigns taking place now and in the coming years. Thank you for taking the time to partake in these important conversations and for visiting with me today. My name is Anh. I am from Vietnam. When someone tell me they were raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. Hi, my name is Missy Sakura. I am the director of the Avapai Family Advocacy Center, an agency that is committed to start by believing. As a victim advocate, I hear many stories from victims of sexual assault. A common theme in most of these cases is that the abuse they endured was almost always inflicted on them by someone they know. This can be a family member, friend, or acquaintance. These dynamics add another layer of emotional complication on what is already an extremely traumatic experience. Because sexual assaults almost always happen in private with no witnesses, victims are immediately put in a place where they have to make very difficult decisions, including whether or not to seek help. They question whether or not they will be believed, blamed, or if they have some responsibility or ownership in why the assault happened. In most situations, victims will initially seek support from a family member or friend rather than a formal agency. The response they receive after the initial disclosure greatly impacts whether or not they tell anyone else, including law enforcement, medical professionals, victim advocates, and whether or not they seek help in dealing with the trauma of their assault. About two years ago, a woman in her 30s came to the Family Advocacy Center that I run asking for support regarding a sexual assault that had happened almost a year prior. She said that she had been recently separated from her husband. She had held a family event at her home, which her sister and brother-in-law attended, along with about 20 other family members. After the party, her sister and brother-in-law stayed to help clean up. They had driven separately, so her sister left first to take the children home, while her brother-in-law stayed to help finish up. She said that within 20 minutes of her sister leaving, her brother-in-law had cornered her in the house and forcibly raped her. The woman did not tell anyone for about a week, during which she saw her sister and brother-in-law in several times. He acted as if all was well. During that week, she had bruises that were healing, couldn't sleep or eat, and was so emotionally and physically impacted that she could not go to work. She said she initially did not tell because she did not want to hurt her sister or her niece and nephew, but eventually she could not hold it in any longer. The first and only other time she told anyone about what happened was when she told her father and stepmother. Their responses were life-changing and led to months of self-doubt as well as another layer of severe emotional trauma. Her father told her she must have misunderstood her brother-in-law, and even when she insisted that he had injured her and forcibly had sex with her, her father continued to say it was a misunderstanding. Her stepmother asked her that day and several other times what she had done to provoke her brother-in-law and lead him on. When she came to our center, she said she felt alone, suicidal, and hopeless, and was abusing antidepressants. She felt suicidal and had nowhere else to go. She said this was her last chance, but she knew we would probably not believe her. At the Yavabai Family Advocacy Center, we fully embraced the Start By Believing philosophy. The woman who came to our agency many months ago received support, advocacy, and trauma therapy. She remains committed in her decision to not report to law enforcement or seek any further support from her family regarding the assault, but she also had a, has a feeling of empowerment and strength because someone listened and believed. This story is so sad and in many ways difficult for us to believe and understand, 
but it is far too common. More than 90% of victims of sexual assault who seek support initially go to family or friends. The response they will receive will change the trajectory of their lives for better or worse. It can help them on their road to healing or send them into a spiral of blame, guilt, and embarrassment. The road to healing after a significant personal assault is long and difficult. It is constantly impacted by those closest to the victim, those in whom they seek support and protection. Understanding that it is never okay to forcibly assault or harm another person is all of our responsibility, just as listening and believing a friend, loved one, or victim is when they tell you it has happened to them. The first step to helping someone heal is listening to their story, being non-judgmental and supportive, and being by their side through the difficult road of recovery that lies ahead. Please join me in listening, supporting, and not judging when and if someone tells you they are a victim of assault or abuse. Please join me in committing to start by believing. Hi, my name is Gerald. When someone tells me they've been raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. Hi, I'm Nicole Florisi. I am the executive director of the Verde Valley Sanctuary. And we embrace the Start by Believing campaign and concepts to help support survivors of sexual assault. At Verde Valley Sanctuary, we are a safe haven and holistic provider of services to survivors of domestic violence, sexual violence, and human trafficking. Verde Valley Sanctuary provides 24-hour emergency shelter services accompanied by therapeutic case management, advocacy, and education tailored to the needs of our clients. We provide additional services of mobile community outreach, youth empowerment education, intensive support groups, and lay legal advocacy. All of these are designed to assist those within a trauma-informed framework that supports empowerment and enhances survivor safety. Our services are available in both English and Spanish and provided at no cost. Many people don't report their sexual assault due to shame, guilt, or fear. It is important for us to work together with survivors and our community partners to form a foundational response that is rooted in belief that both enhances resiliency and mitigates the negative impact of the event of a sexual assault. And let's be honest, no support for a sexual assault is better than harmful or hurtful reactions from family or friends or even the personnel that we work with in a formal supportive or investigative services area. But the route that we wanna take is we wanna be supportive and we wanna believe what survivors are telling us and that's where we should operate from. We wanna work with survivors in a manner that is respectful and trauma-informed regardless of who the survivor interacts with. Many survivors don't seek the services they need and even fewer report their sexual assault to law enforcement. We have to ask ourselves, how can we be part of the solution instead of part of the problem? Well, that starts on both an individual level and within the cultures of our organizations. We need to look at survivors from a holistic standpoint, and more so, we need to work together to destroy the misconceptions about sexual assault and how victims are supposed to behave. Beyond being rooted in believing those who come to us, we need to help others understand how people do respond under extreme stress arousal and under extreme fear. This is grounded in science. We need to inform people about psychological and physiological responses that happen during sexual assault. We can only change misconceptions with conversation and education. So start by believing. Start by listening and being present with a survivor. Start by responding to survivors with empathy and supporting them in a non-judgmental way. Start by educating yourself in how sexual assault and trauma affect the brain so you too are operating from an educated platform. Start by honoring the strength that it takes for someone to share what could be the most horrific experience of their life with you. And they chose you and you should honor that. We are the College Honors Program. When someone tells me they were raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. I'm Yavapai County Sheriff David Rhodes. Unfortunately, one of the most heinous and traumatizing crimes against another person can also be one of the most difficult to bring to justice. Investigating sexual assault is difficult. Complications can be many, including substance use, a lack of witnesses, or evidence, and varying accounts of the incident. For an investigator, one of the most important pieces in sexual assault cases 
is how we work with the people involved. We would love for the victim to be able to provide step-by-step -step details of what occurred. However, we know that trauma causes difficulty with cognitive recall. We want to collect and preserve all possible evidence as we would in other crimes. Sadly, the crime scene primarily includes a victim's body. It's not uncommon for us to think that a victim of a sexual assault should act in a certain manner, but trauma significantly impacts a victim's behavior and memory. We also know that most sexual assaults are perpetrated by a person that the victim knows and trusts. They occur on dates, hanging out with friends, or even by a person's intimate partner or family member. All of these factors add to the ongoing trauma a victim experiences. The system can bring feelings of shame and blame. Sadly, this can lead to a person who is seeking justice for themselves to stop participating in the investigation altogether or never report it to begin with. The result is justice denied. We in law enforcement must remember throughout our investigations that a fair and impartial process is necessary to achieve justice. Recognizing the role of trauma will allow us greater understanding of the response of victims of this intensely personal attack. When we start by believing, it means we treat victims with compassion and respect. We ensure victims feel safe during our interviews with them. We understand and remember the factors that cause complications as we work through the investigation. We ensure that we do not portray doubt or blame. We encourage the victim to become a survivor and to connect and engage with appropriate support services. We follow all possible leads and review all possible evidence as we would all crimes. We commit to specialized training to gain a stronger understanding of the complexities of these cases. For the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office, start by believing means conducting a thorough, fair, impartial, and evidence-based investigation with compassion and professionalism. Mi nombre es Yvonne Zuriga. Cuando alguien me dice que fueron violadas o agredidas sexualmente, yo prometo a empezar a proteger. My name is Sheila Polk and I serve as the Yavapai County Attorney. I wholeheartedly embrace Start By Believing and here is why. Cases of sexual assault are oftentimes factually and emotionally very complex. The approach that investigators and prosecutors take when meeting and interviewing the victim sets the stage to get to the truth. From that very first moment, conveying to the victim an atmosphere of trust and support can make or break the case. When we create an environment where the victim does not feel judged and feels believed, he or she is more likely to divulge the details of what happened, allowing for a better investigation and a more just outcome for all involved. This isn't about blind belief, but about starting the investigation from an initial orientation of belief, just as we would on any other crime. When a person has had a vehicle stolen, we don't start the investigation by challenging the victim's credibility. So why is it that in cases of rape or sexual assault, society suggests that we should start our investigation by challenging the veracity of the victim. There are many myths about a true rape that are simply false, but manifest themselves in the form of implicit bias. Start by believing allows us to set aside those biases and search for the truth. Case outcomes will only improve when, pro when police and prosecutors start from the presumption that a sexual assault report has merit and then follow the evidence through the course of a fair, impartial, and thorough investigation and charging decision. When we start by believing, use victim-centered approaches and trauma-informed investigation techniques, we create better investigations and arrive at the facts more quickly. Start by believing is a bridge to obtain better information, more complete disclosure, and more detailed statements. Start by believing is about conveying the message to survivors that they are believed and supported. This can also assist survivors in staying more fully engaged with the investigation and the prosecution as we work toward a successful resolution. 
even when a prosecution may not occur due to a number of factors, such as our inability to identify the suspect, or perhaps there simply isn't enough evidence to take a case to trial, we can still assist the victim in their recovery, which is one outcome of justice. In fact, research shows that the two specific behaviors that seem to have the most significant positive effect on a victim's well-being in the aftermath of a sexual assault are having someone to talk to and being believed. The prosecutor's role is always to seek justice, and when we start by believing, we create the foundation for improved outcomes, one case at a time, one victim at a time. When someone tells me they were raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. The Yavapai College Respect Campaign is dedicated to creating a safe and welcoming environment for the entire college community. We commit to listening respectfully, speaking kindly, acting ethically, and acknowledging the lived experiences of our students, our colleagues, and everyone who calls themselves a Rough Rider. That is why we pledge to start by believing. Hello, I am Linda Shook, Associate Dean of Lifelong Learning, Community Education, and the Sedona Center. In recognition of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, I am taking the pledge. When someone tells me they were raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. Taking those first steps after experiencing sexual violence can be really hard. You may wanna speak with a friend, a family member, a counselor, or the police. As a student or employee of Yapapai College, you can also get support from your Title IX office. Title IX is a federal law intended to protect people from discrimination or harassment based on sex in any college program or activity. Some people find that by connecting with the Title IX office, it can help them get a sense of control and start the healing process. I work as a Title IX coordinator for Yavapai College. We do our best to respond quickly to any complaint of sexual harassment or sexual violence among our students or employees. We can investigate and take action to ensure you're safe, protected, and comfortable at college. The Title IX office is there to provide supportive measures so that you can succeed and complete your educational goals. We are the Rough Rider Ambassadors. When, when someone, someone tells me they are raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. Hello, I'm Lisa Ryan, president of Yavapai College. I'm honored to be here with all of you today. Director Archambault, what you have done throughout your career to help fight for survivors of sexual violence, your dedication to raising awareness and assistance in training others is breathtaking and inspirational. Each year since 2003, End Violence Against Women International is impacting more and more survivors. It takes a large group of people who are willing to sacrifice their own time and energy to make cultural issues come to light and create change, like the eradication of sexual violence from our society. And every group needs a leader, which Director Archambault has certainly become. As president of Yavapai College, we believe in the same core principles that Director Archambault has endorsed and embodied for many years. Believing victims and providing support is crucial to the recovery process and teaching others how to believe and be supportive is the first step in the process. I'm proud that Yavapai College is a partner with Start By Believing campaign, founded by Director Archambault herself. It is through efforts like these that we gain more support across the country. We can save more and more victims of sexual violence and remove this abuse from our society. Thank you, Director Archambault, for all that you've done. And we at Yavapai College are proud to continue your mission. And we now would like to present you with this token of our appreciation. Joanne, you always are looking for ways to acknowledge not only your staff, but others uh, with uh, awards and with recognition. 
we've actually been sitting on this for what they a year and a half <laughs> and it's fortunate last year we didn't date it so we've decided this year you're getting it i will put it in the mail when we're done but let me read this and award of recognition to joanne archambault in recognition for developing and implementing the start by believing philosophy and providing ongoing inspiration to communities in creating responses to survivors of sexual violence around the world in a positive, supportive way. Every response matters. Your response matters at Yavapai College, Prescott, Arizona. So <laughs> that's really nice of you. But you know what's funny is at this point in my life, first of all, I feel like I've gotten tons of recognition and appreciation and accolades. Um, I mean, it's always good to hear and see, but to be honest with you, what feeds my soul more at this point in my career is watching the other people doing the work and carrying it forward. I don't think there's anything more rewarding. And just uh, the post that we just, I don't know, Gerald, if you saw it, I don't know how often you're on LinkedIn, but we had posted this high school student that wrote an article about um, Audrey and Daisy and the suicides. And I wanted to do it because I thought it was so important to mentor someone that young that's out there trying to push the envelope. And the response has been so positive on LinkedIn, as I suspected that it would, like people get it, right? Gosh, the reward is watching it all unfold and watching people do such incredible things. So thank you so much. Today, April 7th, is a powerful day for our college, our communities, our country, and our world. The Start By Believing campaign is a crucial effort that we all must get behind to protect and support those who have experienced sexual assault. I can't tell you how proud it makes me to see all the students, faculty, and staff from Yavapai College who were featured here today in support of this campaign. And believe me, many, many more are with us in spirit and in action. Sexual assault, unfortunately, happens everywhere. I'm sure many of us know a victim of sexual assault somewhere in our lives, and quite frankly, that is unacceptable. It is all of our jobs to raise awareness against this cruel violence and support the survivors in every way that we can. This includes all faculty, staff, students, and community members of Yavapai College. As president, I vow that our college holds zero tolerance for sexual assault. I'm proud of our college police department, respect campaign, and our college community's efforts and support. Our backing of campaigns like Start By Believing is fundamental in keeping our campuses and environments safe. I want everyone at YC to know that we are here to support you and we believe you. All persons deserve dignity and respect. At YC, we will listen, offer a safe, confidential environment, and we will do everything we can to help victims recover. As I get ready to read the following proclamation, I want you to know that I believe it takes all of us to win this battle against sexual assault. And together, I truly believe that we can and we will. Proclamation, International Start By Believing Day, April 7, 2021. Whereas Yavapai Community College shares a critical concern for victims of sexual violence, and a desire to support their needs for justice and healing. And whereas current estimates suggest that four out of five sexual assaults of students will not be reported to law enforcement, and less than 3% will result in the conviction and incarceration of the perpetrator. And whereas it is estimated that one in five women and one in eight men have been sexually assaulted during the college years, Decades of research demonstrate that sexual assault victims are often doubted or blamed, and these negative responses have a number of harmful effects. They also decrease the chance that victims will report the crime and reach out for help. Whereas research documents that victims are far more likely to disclose their sexual assault to a friend or family member, and when these loved ones respond with any doubt, shame, or blame, victims suffer additional negative effects on their physical and psychological well-being. And whereas the Start By Believing Public Awareness Campaign, a program of End Violence Against Women International, is designated to assist the college community in taking a stand against sexual violence 
and to improve the responses of friends, family members, and community professionals so that they can help victims to access supportive resources and engage the criminal justice system. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Lisa Ryan, President of Yavapai College, do hereby proclaim that Yavapai College does support the Start By Believing public awareness campaign and do hereby declare the first Wednesday of April each year to be International Start By Believing Day throughout the Yavapai College campuses and centers. We are the My name is Shelby Thomason, credentialed victim advocate for Yavapai College. The Start By Believing program is so important to me because in my own experience as a survivor, the fear of not being believed was overwhelming and it severely impacted my life. I want to make sure none of our students ever feel that way and I want to show their, our students that they are never alone. It is for this reason that when someone tells me they are raped or sexually assaulted, I will start by believing. When someone reports they have been victimized and are a survivor of sexual violence, please help in ending the cycle and start by believing. My name is Ralph. When someone tells me they were raped or sexually assaulted, I pledge to start by believing. 